guys it's skybird and i've got a really special video for you guys today because today was the very first time i've ever successfully in fact ever resin casted an object and it is this huna that you see in front of you here it is not 100 percent white i did run into some issues with pigmenting which i'll get into maybe in a separate video that said it looks wide enough on camera i think it's totally fine but in celebration of that i wanted to show you how to build my custom superposable uh, uh, taraga build What's really cool about this is that it is the exact same height as an official Turaga from 2001, as well as the same or as close as possible color blocking to the 2001 Turaga. However, it just has way more posability, including posability in the shoulders, which is a ball joint there, in the hands with the wrist ball, uh, at the legs, of course, the same as regular Turaga. The waist as well can swivel, the feet can swivel, the neck can move at a ball joint and even be tilted back just a little bit extra if you actually want that. So it's a lot of movement in this small build. Great for stop motion, great for just, you know, scenic pictures in general. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to build with no comma. I did wanna go ahead and mention that that version of the build actually uses a custom piece. However, I have a version of the build that uses zero custom pieces that uses only pieces from Lego. The Vakama that you saw is using this 3D printed piece right here. And this was printed, I think, by Nitromino in my community, Nate's Mask Shop. I think. I could be misremembering that. Uh, but yeah, special thanks goes out to him. This is a toe ball on an axle. Nothing too crazy going on here. Hopefully, Lego will make this at some point because it has so much potential. You can use it on so many things. Anyway, let's go ahead and get right on into it. So, this allotment of items is what you'll need unless I forgot something. And we're gonna go ahead and actually start with one of these perpendicular connectors here. And we're gonna take one of our number three axles and just slide it right on through at the base so that it's in the middle. Now we're going to take these more modern, not too modern, I think these came out back in like 2008 or nine or something like that, but these little guys right here, one on each side, just like that. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take one of these friction pins, and you can use black if you want to. I just wanted to use blue to keep with the theme of the build here, as you guys can probably tell. And we're going to take this one here and do kind of the same thing with another three long axle. So just like this, pushing it right towards the center in this case. However, with this one, we are actually going to take these smaller connectors here, just like this. So we're actually going to use one of these thin uh, two length lift arms and a thin three length lift arm here. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting and you might see this as an illegal building technique and that's okay. However, I have seen it used plenty and I actually found this out before I had seen it used elsewhere. I'm actually gonna save that one because I was damaged. But we're gonna take one of these number three long lightsaber bar pieces and actually push it all the way through. This is hard the first time you do it, but after that it will go through a lot easier, although it's never gonna be like super easy. Well, sometimes. Some of these can be easier than others. But essentially what you're doing is you're trying to center that bar as good as possible, and then you can fix it afterwards if that really bothers you. Now that said, this piece that I have here is broken. These thin lift arms break quite easily. So uh, I did get a spare just in case uh, any of these happen to be broke. And sure enough, that one was. Uh, that said, now that that is in place, uh, it is able to pivot around that just a little bit. We're going to fill that empty space with another two long and then three long thin lift arms. So essentially what we are doing here is we are actually creating the body for the build. So this is where we're at so far. This is going to become the waist. And if you recognize the shaping here, this is actually the exact same shape as the lift arm used for the original Turaga build. That's one of the main features about this build in general. Next, we're going to move on to at least starting the arms. I'm going to use hollow ball joints in this case, but you can actually use any kind. I just chose these so you can see that you can use both. And in this case here, we're actually going to push this in, as you would expect, on both sides. Just making sure not to break this piece. Yes, these are fragile, although I have a lot better luck with black compared to some of the other colors. Uh, so thankfully, I have a lot of these that are not broken. And we're going to go ahead and pop that right on the back here. As mentioned, this one is my build not using custom parts. I'll show you the custom version at the end. But now we are going to take 
our number two axle and stick it in the arm here, doing the same on both sides. And since this is no comma, we are also going to take number four axles for the hands. Now we're going to go ahead and plug that into the shoulders here, which are the ball joints that you can see, and then add a ball joint to the end of the hand where the wrist is. Since Nokama has longer arms as well as Nuju, I use black ball joints on them. However, on all of the others, I use a ball joint in their color. Uh, so for Winua, I use old dark gray, which do exist, though they have a print on them you'll have to remove. Uh, for Oniwa, I use tan. For Vakama, I use orange. And for Matau, I use lime green. So that is our next step, popping the ball joint into the head here. I actually like to aim this one forward. Uh, I think it just adds a little bit of extra insurance that the head is going to stay on once we plug it into that slot. Next, we're going to go ahead and take our two friction pins and just plug them right into the pinholes that we put on at the very beginning, running these pieces on here next. And then we are going to go ahead and take our other three long lightsaber bars, plugging them into what will become the feet. Putting the foot on, which is the Mata heads, if I can get this one on, that three long uh, lightsaber bar there is damaged, so it's a little bit harder to get on there. And lastly, we are going to go ahead and give her her trident. And that is the build for my custom Nokama. Really happy with the builds of all of these guys. You can kind of see how you will change them between each of the Turaga builds. Uh, Oniwa here, obviously being the tallest, has these taller legs. In his case, I don't use the bushings here, but rather I use a longer connector, which I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but I think you guys are familiar enough with that piece. It's the same piece that Liwa uses for fingers, except in old gray. Uh, with Winua, it's a little bit more interesting, and I did realize that I grabbed the wrong axles for the hands. That's why I have two spare black axles. Uh, but since Winua has actually a shorter neck, what you do in his case, let me see if I can get this off without pulling off the stopper here, is you actually flip the ball joint, or the socket rather, upside down. And because we use that, that piece on the waist here, it's actually just enough room for a ball joint in there. In this case, I recommend a hollow ball joint, or at the very least a more modern ball joint in there, uh, because they hold onto axles just a little bit better than the older ones. For this older version, or sorry, for the custom version of the build here, what we are going to build is this. So this is essentially going to take the place of the arm connector here. So what you would do if you wanted to connect this is you would actually take the legs off, pull out that pin that we put in at the beginning, take the arms off, pop those out on both sides, plug the arms into this build, show in just a moment, plug this back into the hole from the top, and then plug the waist back in here. And you can see that this actually shortens the uh, distance between the arms. So in the original, it's a distance of five. Here it is a distance of three, which is uh, what they are normally. Uh, so the build for this is actually fairly simple. Let me go ahead and try and show that very quickly. Um, but it is just taking a bushing pin, a uh, friction pin, as well as a friction axle in here. I'm using black, but you can use blue or whatever color you have handy. Technically, you could even use tan or light gray. This piece really isn't going to move all that much. Then we are going to take that axle ball joint piece. Either side, realistically, could go in here. Um, I, however, like to do it with the black side in just because it blends with the body a little bit better. Also, I think the orientation of the socket uh, helps to some degree as well. Uh, but it's definitely something to play around with. The last thing is these pieces up here, again, are those thin, three long lift arms. There's a pair of them up there. Uh, so that is pretty much it for these builds. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because it does help the channel out a lot. Hopefully, this changes the game when it comes to you building your Turaga. If you want to build them on a shelf and have them posed and standing all next to each other, I can tell you right now that it is. A fantastic option. Uh, the, I guess, most creative build is probably Matau since the neck on that one goes forward. Uh, the way that I manage that is by actually, let me go ahead and take this head off real quick, by actually taking this uh, connection here and rotating it back 
90 degrees, and then using a horn piece, uh, a, a barb piece in that axle to actually go down inside of that uh, friction pin. Uh, it actually angles the neck just right to really meet up with the original orientation. Uh, I think I've done a version of it for my custom arm build using the 3D printed pieces, but I can't quite remember if I have or not. That said, it's not a huge deal either way. Uh, there is a gap left in here that you can fill in uh, on your own, and that works out really well. So uh, if you guys, like I said, enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Check out my links in the description. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.